Okay, silence everyone. We are ready when you are. Okay, so Gang Valid in El Salvador by Talia, Lila, and Lizzie. El Salvador is a country located in Central America with a population of about 6 million. It is the deadliest country in Central America. As of 2019, four people were killed each day as a result of gang violence. Team question. How has the actions of the government of El Salvador affected the gang activity and their consequenting death of the government directly affects the lives of El Salvadorans and is responsible for not being able to put an end to the constant gang violence and suffering. The El Salvadorans are facing poverty, gang rape, and murders every day and atrocities committed by both the gangs and the police forces. It is a, human, it is a humanitarian issue cause to try to help this country's people. Our thesis is the government isn't helping with the outbreak of gang violence, which is causing them to harm the community. How are the gangs causing people to migrate? So according to the Migration Policy Institute, as of 2016, around 1.3 million Salvadorians migrated to America. And according to the crisis group, they interviewed a person and they said that the reason why they migrated is because they were scared that the gangs will affect them and their family. Also, according to the Washington Post, the police officers are also starting to migrate to America because they have to deal with the gangs outside of work and during work because they don't get enough money to live in a better environment. So they have to live in the same neighborhoods that are high in gang activity. So how are the youth being affected by gangs? So according to a study that was done by the author in Endorf, kids, most of the kids living in poverty are more likely to join a gang because they look for a brotherhood, but the gangs are actually targeting them because they know that the kids that grew up in poverty want money, they want a job, so they will um, recruit the kids in poverty to do baby crimes, which are crimes that if the kids get caught doing, they won't spend that much time behind jail, in jail or any time at all. So one thing that the gangs are doing are using the kids to collect rental, which is like a tribute to protect like local businesses and also people that live in the area. And how are the gangs increasing poverty? So gangs force people to pay rent, like I just said before. And so according to a PBS interview, um, a man said that he was already living in poverty, but the gangs came and basically forced him to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to them. And if he didn't pay it, he would end up dead. So he said it's better to live in poverty than to be dead because he wants to actually be there to see his kids grow up. And then only the only way that they will be able to survive is if they migrate to America or one of their family members migrate to America. Um, so red zones are kind of like areas or like roads and streets where the wealthy people or the people with more money can pay the gangs to ensure like safety and like that their kids and themselves can get to work and to school safely. But the problem with that is that the kids that don't can't afford those um, opportunities to go to school safely, they don't have, they can't go to school because they're too scared to leave their homes. The government's solutions are often temporary and don't change much in the long run, like putting a band-aid on a gun wound. The homicide rates have remained for years far above the standard of what is um, called epidemic. The government has been making much improvements in the accessibility of education for the youth and this causes an increase in student dropouts. If El Salvadorans are not educated, then they will be more likely to make the wrong choices and find job opportunities that can make them more dependent on the gangs for income and stability. Um, and according to the Hemispheric Affairs um, Organization, 57% of kids drop out of school between 8th and 12th grade. And that is because, like Talia had mentioned, the rent they're also not only on the streets, but in the schools, like stopping kids on their way to classes and things, demanding them to pay their rent. And most kids like that live in poverty don't carry not much, a lot of money with them. And they can't afford to pay this rent, and so they're scared because they don't want to get shot and they don't want their family to get hurt or anything. So that causes them to drop out. And it's just everybody's scared, so no one wants to leave their house or like go to work or school or anything because it's so dangerous. Though the treaty between the government and the gangs, MS-13 and the 8th Street, Street Gangs, have 
have momentarily brought down the momentarily had brought down the murder rate to 70 percent. It didn't last, and it might have even made the situation worse because it strengthened the gang's unity. Additionally, this exchange between the government and the gangs is often taken as unconstitutional and illegal. I'll go back. I'm sorry. Um, source from the Congressional Research Service. It shows that El Salvador's government has had a long history of corruption and weak leaders. The police justice system rarely reprimands or prosecutes abusive police officers, which allows for corruption to exist in the first place. Okay, so El Salvador's unstable condition concerning the gangs and their consequent environment violence must be regarded as a serious issue. Furthermore, the government should come up with solutions that propose realistic plans to better the country in the future. If the government is incapable of this, the nonprofit organizations like the NACLA, which is a Latin American nonprofit dedicated to help solve civil and human rights, anti-war, etc. issues, need to step in and help El Salvador get back on its feet. Our conclusion is El Salvador, El Salvador is a country corrupted with both gangs and the government. And the awareness of its issues and current condition needs to be spread so that hopefully other countries will stand up and help. And you are on citation. Thank you. Y'all are at six minutes, 37 seconds. Good on your timing. I have some questions for this team. My first question is for Talia. Yes, ma'am. How did your team go about developing the research question? So what we did was we put together kind of like common knowledge, like we kind of knew that um, people are migrating to America and that it's gang activities, but we didn't know like what the root of the problem was or like really why like this is such a huge impact and why um, the migration rates keep going up. So we did, so that's why we did our research question and from what we found that was in our presentation. Thank you. My next question is going to be for Lila. How did your own views about this problem or issue change as the result of evidence found by your teammates? So first, when I began my research on this issue about the government and how it affected the gangs, um, through um, my sources, it seemed that the government was a positive force um, and it was helping the situation. But then when I gained a broader view by looking at Talia and Leslie's points of view and their research, I came to kind of like observe the different um, struggles and points of view of the government and that it really was actually a negative force um, and was doing a lot of harm to the El Salvador's people. So by gaining a wider perspective, it helped me to actually become less biased and more um, see the realistic side of what was going on. Thank you. And our last question is for Lizzie. Could you describe the thought processes as you prepared to deliver the argument to an audience? Which points did you want to be sure would be emphasized in this presentation? Okay, so when I was researching my question, which is the effect of the gangs on the children in the community and their education, um, I, had really, I had really no idea like how they, what they were doing and like, I didn't know how like bad it was. So I wanted to like, share with everybody that it was it really is at like a really bad level and like the dropout rates are like at 57 percent and that's pretty high and i wanted to share like direct things that have happened within the community and let people know that like this is happening and like we need to thank you very much good job good job